Uh, my name is Oscar Larsson. Uh, I work with uh, marketing at Cision, and I am honored to be joined here today by Barnaby Barron, head of analysis for our uh, insight services. Yeah. Hi, Barron. Hey, Oscar. Hi. Um, and hi, everyone. Uh, so today we're, we're going to talk uh, about measurement and and uh, measurement within PR and and sort of current struggles and and how we can sort of uh, overcome those obstacles. And I wanted to start off with, I mean, it is so established uh, the struggle of of measurement within PR. Um, could you uh, share your uh, view on on why it is hard for PR and comms to to measure ROI? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's something we hear a lot from customers and, and I hear a lot from professionals within the communications industry that measuring and probably more so demonstrating the value of your earned media communications is something that's really difficult and I think the reason that it is so difficult is because of a couple things firstly probably the fact that communications often exists much earlier in the funnel um, than something like marketing or advertising in, in particular would do, particularly for you know, organizations selling a product. It may be the earned media, the PR, the communications that raises awareness for that product that then ultimately means someone clicks on an advert to purchase that product. But that sale, if you will, or that return on investment is often attributed directly to the advertising because it's really difficult to draw a causal link between that awareness and that click of an advert. Um, rightly so in, in most cases, because I don't think uh, anyone here thinks it would be a good idea for every organization in the world to track every behavior of online users online. That, that would not help me sleep at night. Um, I think that's one of the first kind of things, that difficulty in drawing a causal link. And I think the other thing that can make it really difficult is the fact that earned media in particular is a very kind of complex, chaotic system you know, with advertising or um, paid media. You can distribute a bunch of advertisements over a period of time and, you know, based on previous results, you can be relatively confident of the type of outcome that you're going to get. Whereas with earned media, there are so many other complex factors that can impact results. You may have the best campaign in the world executed perfectly. And you know, if a big news story breaks on the same day or the day before that campaign's going out, you might get really bad results just because all of the newspapers are talking about, you know, maybe some other big global world event, which we have seen you know, more and more of in, in the past few years. So that then can make it really difficult to show return on investment because sometimes there isn't a return on investment even when you've done everything right. So I think those two things are, are a couple of the big things that certainly make it more complex or, or more difficult to show return on investment on a, on a communications campaign. Mm -hmm. And having those uh, difficulties, I mean, looking at you, what you actually can measure, what, what would you suggest, what should you measure and, and why? Yeah, great question. So I will often think about the different things that you can measure in, in a few different categories. Um, so generally what you'll be starting with is kind of the um, outputs of what your activity is. So you'll undertake you know, some engagement with journalists, you'll push, push press releases out, may engage with different influencers, giving them products, those different kind of typical activities that will be part of uh, earned media, uh, driving earned media content. That gives you an idea then of the types of results that you've got from a volume of articles, number of social posts, those kind of typical outputs, if you will. Then you kind of want to look at what the content of all of that is and kind of the quality of that. So once you've got an idea of the number of articles, the potential reach of those articles, you want to look at the quality of that content. So is it favorable? What topics is it discussing? Is it hitting your organization's key messages? That can really help you understand 
yeah, the kind of the quality of content you're producing. I think most people would agree they'd rather have you know, 50 articles which you know, mention your organization in the headline, are strongly favorable, have great messaging in, than 100 articles which mention you once at the bottom of the article. So that kind of helps you tease that those, those couple of bits apart. And then you kind of continue that journey to then start looking at things like engagement metrics. So how many times a particular article has been shared on social media is a great one. Um, tapping into things like your Google Analytics or Adobe Analytics to understand how many people are going from your earned media articles to your website, for example, is, is another. That really gives you an idea of, okay, not only have we got high quality content out there, but our audiences are starting to engage with that content. And then lastly, what you really want to try and do is start to look at kind of business outcomes or business objectives that you want to try and correlate with some of those things. So if, for example, you have a big PR campaign on a particular day or a particular week, looking at the volume of that, the quality, so the sentiment, messaging delivery, looking at the engagement, like I said, and then does that correlate to increased visits to your website? Does it correlate to increased you know, queries for um, sales opportunities? Does it correlate to you know, increased phone calls to a phone line? Whatever it is that your business is really trying to drive. And that's where you can then start demonstrating that return on investment, where you're showing that your PR and comms activity is not just generating lots of noise and discussion, but it's also kind of materially impacting your business objectives and your business aims. And that will often require collaboration, partnership with other departments, whether that's you know, the sales department, whether it's um, marketing department, wh whatever it is within the business. But often you'll need that kind of connective tissue because those business results will come from them somewhere else within the business. Would you say that uh, many uh, brands, companies uh, have, have gotten there already or like in general, other common mistakes they do along the way? Yeah, I, I would say, so I, I've worked in this industry for about 10 years now. And certainly in that 10 year period, we've seen more and more organizations able to you know, tie together that quite complex picture you're pulling together that earned media data alongside business results, alongside other external data to really paint a picture of how is their comms performing and understanding what they could maybe do better to drive better results. But I would still say that the number of organizations who are kind of really in that sweet spot of doing that consistently and really efficiently and effectively are still probably in the minority. And there's still a lot of organizations who are, you know, focused on kind of outdated vanity metrics, things like advertising value equivalency, which does not represent the value of earned media um, and still have a little bit of a way to go to kind of really have, you know, fully formed kind of communications insights program within their business. But we're certainly seeing organizations move in the right direction. Um, but I think there's still a way to go through for those organizations through um, kind of internal evolution, um, through communicating the importance of comms internally um, and, you know, working with working with vendors and, and external partners who can kind of help bring that knowledge and experience into those organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, when measuring uh... Let's say having having one single uh, return of in, of investment metric is that a good way to go, or should you diversify it? Yes, my opinion is that that's a bad way to go. I can see, and I have seen in the past, kind of situations where organisations fall into doing that, or you know, senior leadership is pushing you to do that because, like I was talking about earlier, comms and comms measurement is complicated. There are lots of different factors, lots of different metrics. And depending on what your aims and objectives are, the metrics that you might focus on could be different. Um, so if you're a big B2C brand trying to sell products, you want more coverage, you want positive coverage, you want engagement. 
you know, if you're a financial institution, a B2B one, then actually less coverage might be good for you. So those things can vary. The problem with the single metric is it can be great when things are going well. You know, if you've got a score out of 100 and you go into your board, you know, in January and it's on 90 and then February it's 92, March it's 93, everyone's really happy. Great news, well done, keep doing what you're doing. If you go in there in April and that number out of 100 drops from 90 to 50, everyone's going to say, what's going on? Why? What are we doing wrong? How are we going to change this? How are we going to fix it? And immediately, the first thing that you have to do to understand how you're going to fix it is unpack that number. That number out of 100 doesn't tell you whether it's, you know, it might be that you're not getting enough coverage. It might be that you're getting enough coverage, but the quality of that coverage isn't very good. It might be that the quality of your coverage is great, but no one's engaging with it. It's in the wrong publications. It's in the wrong websites or not where your target audiences are. And that's where those single scores, I think, really become quite tricky and quite troublesome. Um, I, I use this. I've used this analogy before. I think having a single metric is kind of like fly, flying a plane with just a sign that says, like, plane, OK, everything's going well. Um, which is great when you're on autopilot and everything is going well. But as soon as things start going wrong, if the plane just says things are going badly, then you need all of this other information to really understand, OK, what's going badly? How are we going to pivot, change our strategy so that we can get better results? Yeah, I, I know that you've talked uh, a lot about uh, actionable insights. Uh, can you tell me a little of, of what you mean by, by that phrase and, and how you can use it? Yeah, I think actionable insights should really be at the corner, at the, well, should be the cornerstone or be right at the center of every communications insights program. And what I really mean by actionable insights is using data and information, um, often on a large scale, to help understand what is going well, what isn't going so well, and then what changes you're going to make or you know, what things you're going to continue doing as an organization to drive even better results. And one of the things that I think is really interesting about um, actionable insights is they are certainly something that we frequently see within being used by organizations within businesses who have mature communications insights programs and commun and businesses who are performing very well, to be honest. And I think what can be difficult with actionable insights is that often within the executive suite, um, they won't have a huge amount of knowledge and understanding of the comms world in the way that a head of comms or head of PR might. Um, and, you know, a, a CFO or a CEO might just be focused on okay, well, what does this mean? And you know, how are we going to do better? How does this help us sell products? How does this improve our revenue? And I think what can often happen is there could be kind of a disconnect between um, maybe a head of comms and how they're communicating these insights to a senior stakeholder to make them actionable. Um, and there's a great book that um, I read well, I've read and I use quite a lot. I use quite a lot with our teams. It's by Nancy Duarte. It's called Data Story. And it's all about how you use data to drive action. So within that book, there's some research. I can't remember the university it's from. Forgive me. But there's some research that um, basically found that the most effective thing when it comes to driving action is telling a story and engaging with your audience so they kind of understand the story. And I think where people can often fall down and I, I think that the reason this book resonated with me so well is because I'm very much a data person. Uh, I'm not a comms person. Like the idea of phoning a journalist up and pitching a story to them terrifies me. Mm -hmm. The idea of like looking at spreadsheets, looking at Power BI all day, you know, that's what I love doing. So I would often fall into that trap of trap of presenting just slides of data, lots of information, 
Um, I think what this book kind of helped me understand is that less is more. And this is where communicators can really use their strength because they are storytellers. And I think taking out those key nuggets of data and information rather than having maybe five slides or sorry, five charts on a single slide with too much to look at. That's where their strength can really come in in terms of, you know, find a story that is compelling. For example, you know, our audience engagement is low because the quality of our content is not where we want it to be. We should invest in creating more engagement, richer stories for our end users, for our consumers. And then you can have a single chart which maybe shows the social engagement for your company versus your competitors if that's lower. And that's all you need to take to your executive board to tell that story really succinctly, really quickly of, you know, this is what we need to do. And, you know, an idea of how you do it, maybe investing more money with an existing agency, maybe consulting with a new agency to try a new type of campaign that's going to engage with your audience more, maybe doing more research to understand your audience better. So you can kind of tell us quick, succinct story where, you know, in a couple of seconds you can say, okay, our brand is the hero in this story. The hero has, you know, misstepped slightly because they're not getting the results that they want. And this is what we need to do to course correct. And stories like that will engage particularly senior stakeholders much better than just going to a senior stakeholder and, you know, saying, you know, volume of content was good, quality was okay, but not where we want it to be. Engagement needs to be better. Like that, that doesn't really help them understand where your part of the business is and what you need to kind of do to move forward. So I think, yeah, when it comes to really trying to drive actionable insights kind of having being as succinct as possible and having that clear story that you're communicating to your key stakeholders is really important. Yeah. And just uh, in brief, I mean, you and the insights analysis team, uh, what, what do you do to, to help uh, customers generate these uh, actionable insights? Yeah, great, great question. I think the most important thing is really trying to understand their business and the activity that they're undertaking, how that ladders up to their overall business objectives, and then how we should track and analyze that to help give data and information that you know informs what the comm strategy is that hopefully then leads into the business strategy. And I, I say for for us, and I say this to our internal team, I say this to our customers as well. We always want to feel like an extension of your team and we want to feel like when you know your business wins we feel that success as well and we really have that kind of partnership and you know yes that generally means a better relationship for us and for the end customer but to be honest for all of our staff on the ground it's just more interesting and more engaging to work on accounts where you really feel like you're part of that organization's team and that we're kind of winning together as opposed to it being maybe a pure kind of vendor relationship where we kind of say okay here's the data go ahead and try and find what you can that's relevant for you so i think Having that real partnership um, is is really important for us within within Decision Insights team. Okay, Barnaby, uh, thank you so much for for sharing your uh, for your sharing your insights. Hopefully, they are actionable to you. They certainly are to me, working in things that I do. Um, with that, uh, I want to say thanks. Uh, if people want to reach out to you, Barney, uh, how can they do it? Yeah, you can find me. Um, on LinkedIn, I'm um, easily findable. There aren't many Barnaby Barons in the world. Um, or you can you know, email me on my Cision mail. It's just barnaby.baron at Cision.com. So yeah, always, always happy to talk about communications insights. Um, even after 10 years, still very happy to talk about it with people. So yeah, feel free to reach out. Yeah, and you can reach me on oscar.larson at session.com. And if you are interested in finding out more about our insight services, uh, please check out uh, our different websites depending on where you are located. Having that said, uh, I want to wish you a very nice day, Barney. Thanks for talking. Yeah, thanks, Oscar.